Welcome to this demonstration of leveraging the Redwood design system with Oracle Visual Builder Studio. My name is Shai Schmelzer. In this demonstration, we're going to show you how Visual Builder can work with components that are created uh, based on the Redwood design patterns. We'll show you how you can pick up templates and components and use them in your application. We'll show you how you can use complete patterns to implement quick layouts in your application and how the user interface that you're creating has built-in responsive capabilities that allow you to render it successfully on various device sizes. We'll start by creating a new App UI application. We'll give it a name, which is going to be an expense list for us to look at. Let's design our first page. So we can open it in the visual editor. While it's opening, we can actually go over to our services and create a connection to information from the Oracle ERP system. Specifically, we are looking for the expenses business object. So we'll pick up this business object, create a REST connection to it, which will allow us to use it in our pages. Now we want our pages to use the Redwood components, so we'll go to the component exchange where we can look up all the Redwood components. You can search by looking up just Redwood. You can also search for a specific component if you know that you're looking for them just by name. So for example, we are interested in the welcome page template. Once you pick a component and you click on it, you'll get the full documentation for the component over here on the right side and then you can just install the component into your environment. So we would add the welcome page template. Another page template that we're going to use in today's demonstration is called the simple uh, create and edit template. Now here we are actually using the pattern. So pattern is based on a template plus additional functionality. And we'll see that later in the demo. There are also lower level components. For example, we are going to use the collection container, which is just a standalone container for lists and tables. So we're going to install that one into our application. And now those components are just appearing over here inside our component palette. And we can drag and drop them into our page. So let's drop our welcome page template on our empty page. And in the property inspector, we have a bunch of properties that we can set for this template. For example, we can choose the background color. We can set the page title, which is one of the mandatory uh, attributes for this template. Let's also add a description over here. And the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a pointer to an image, which would be in the foreground for our page. So again, we'll choose one of the built-in Redwood images over here. So this is the basic design of our page using the welcome template. Now, inside the page, we have various slots where we can drop information. For example, the welcome, the welcome page has a search slot. It also has a default slot. Now, we're going to use the collection container and drop it into the default slot for our welcome page. The collection container is a container that allows you to specify and include a list of items and for example enable all sorts of actions on those lists of items so we'll just leave here the add button and then from our service connection we're going to pick up the expenses drag and drop it into our page into the collection container to populate it with a table we're going to pick up some of the columns from this business object. Uh, specifically, we want to know the description of the expense. We want to know who we actually paid it for, so the merchant name. And we also want to know some information about the receipt, like the amount and the date for the receipt. We can also uh, rearrange, of course, the order of columns just working regularly in Visual Builder. We'll click Finish to get the list of expenses fetched from Oracle ERP directly into our page. And this is our first page basically done. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to configure this add operation. So again, we're clicking on the collection container and you'll see that there's under events, a set of events that are unique to this container. Okay, one of them is the add event. And the add event, of course, is going to be invoked when you click the add button. So we're going to add an action chain here that is going to navigate to a new page that we're going to create. We'll call this page the 
head page. And let's go to this page. So this is again an empty page. We're starting with an empty page and we're going to pick up one of our templates. In our case, we're going to pick up the simple create and edit template pattern. So this is a template plus additional functionality. You can see those variables, event listeners and actions that have been created as part of the pattern. As the previously, the template itself has a bunch of properties that we can set. And um, so some of them you can just set like that. And you'll notice that some of the other properties are actually based on variables. So those are the variables that we're seeing over there. So for example, there's a section here that tells us whether to show a, an option to navigate back to the parent. And this is controlled by this variable over here, which is called the go to parent option. And uh, by default, it's false. We can turn it into two. And then if we'll go back into the page, you'll see the navigate to parent option over there. Another thing we can set here, for example, is the display mode. We're going to use mixed, which is going to change the background color of our area here to be uh, the same color as the title. As you can see, we now have this navigate to parent also on the left side. Now the template has a default primary action. We're going to change it to say add, okay, it was submit. And then there's also a dynamic form that is part of this template. And we're going to leverage this dynamic form wizard and quick start to create a dynamic form that is going to allow us to add information about expenses. So we'll define the form. We can specify again, which fields we want to have there so people can insert this information. We'll pick the same four fields, the merchant, the description, and the receipt amount and date click finish and this is how we configure the ui of our new page with the dynamic form now this page also has a bunch of events now associated with it specifically for the template there's an event for example for the save chain okay what's going to happen when you save there's an event for the submitting the page okay and those events are events that are pre-populated with an action chain, but you can go in and modify those. And in fact, in some cases, you need to modify them. For example, if you use the go to parent uh, action, you can go over and specify which page you're going to navigate to as the parent page. Another uh, action that we're going to use is the save action. So you can see there's uh, some logic in here. And at the end of the logic, we're calling an action chain. This needs to be an action chain that actually creates the expense. So we're going to pick up this action chain. It's accepting a parameter, which is the expenses. So this object has been created for us by creating this dynamic form. So we'll just map this variable in. And this is how you tie in an action chain to actually save your data. Then in the submit option, we also want the option to navigate back to our uh, parent page. So we'll again specify here, navigate to the main start page. So this is how you use the built-in actions that are coming with the template and with the pattern to configure the behavior of your pages. Now let's go over and run our little application. Uh, we'll click to preview the application. The application opens up, we get a list of expenses. If we click the add button, we'll be navigated into the add expense page that we created. We can provide information about a, a new expense, for example, maybe some lunch that we ate. And then when we click the add button, this would insert the information into our LRP, but it would also do the navigation back to the page we came in from. And we can now see this um, expense also appearing in the table. Now, one of the advantages of our templates are that they are also have responsive behavior out of the box. So for example, if we take this page that we created and we look at it um, on a size that is more similar to a mobile device, you will notice that the add and cancel button are now at the bottom 
okay? Uh, you can also notice that the menu at the top um, is being collapsed. So when it says vision, when you go small, it becomes smaller and it pops up with this dual. So this is responsive behavior, and this is how you leverage basic Redwood templates in your application.